Good morning, colleagues, uh, and thank you for joining us on the virtual bridge session. Today's session has come as a result of a, a lot of feedback and a lot of requests for colleges uh, for anything that might help support engagement. There is a general issue with remote learning about ensuring engagement, encouraging engagement, and many colleges that uh, embarked on remote learning building on their experience in blended learning, assumed remote would be a short-term and temporary arrangement. Uh, it's now much more well embedded. And I think we need to learn from those whose um, core work uh, for a number of years has been remote learning. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, West Highland College uh, have a, a lot of experience and expertise in this area. And I'm going to hand over to Fiona and Leslie uh, to tell us what's worked for them in terms of encouraging engagement with learners. Hello everybody, um, my name is Fiona Grant. I'm Director of Academic Affairs at West Highland College. I'm gonna share my screen um, because we're gonna run through a few um, slides. So let me know if you get this okay on your screen just now. So John, can you give me a thumbs yep. up, giving me a nod? Okay, thank you, John, for inviting us to have a chat about student engagement um, and participation and how we go about doing that. Um, doing our best, I think, is, is how I would phrase it at the moment. What we do in terms of supporting staff and students remotely, that means at a distance from each other, and we're all very used to that now. I think um, the first thing I would say is that there really isn't one right way to do things it's really about a combination we all know this well whether delivering in a physical classroom um, or teaching online or working together in one room or as we are here so there's a range of different um, ways of doing things and for me i think everything has become somewhat amplified i suppose uh, during this pandemic and I'd like to draw attention to the fact that these times are extremely challenging for us, for me. Um, we've been doing this for a, a number of years, as you've said, uh, for our students, for our staff. But I think there is also something about having extremely challenging times and there's great examples um, from the likes of endurance athletes, adventurers, about getting to that next level in times of adversity. And um, particularly, I think it brings about a different level of awareness. And I, I just kind of want, would like to reflect on that in terms of what have we learned about working this way? What insights has this remote way of learning afforded us? And indeed, lear working uh, in this way. And then thinking and moving forward about what this has in terms of advantage for us in order to benefit other people. So this se session is very much about engagement, participation, interaction online and the sort of things that we've been doing and thinking about it over a course of years. It's very much that multifaceted approach uh, and we'll come into that with Leslie. Um, long history, um, John, those were your words and I think there is some kind of context and my perspective is it is a long history but it might not be to everybody else because West Highland College is only 10 years old this is our 10th anniversary year so I think it's quite important to reflect and share with people a little bit about the context of the college which might help in terms of explaining a couple of points so um, the college itself covers an area half the size of Wales. Small pockets of populations huddled between huge mountain sea lochs and you know that vast wilderness. It, I tell you, it is a stunning and spectacular place to live, learn and work. And I hope I'm selling that well. Our vision and mission at the college has always been about providing the right learning and teaching in the right place. And it's about that accessibility of learning that has really kind of grasped us. And you can now see from the geography why we have been teaching online for a number of years and making use of those digital technologies um, for managing remote learning and also our dispersed teams of staff. 
So we recognise that we can't teach everything online, absolutely not. So one of the first things that we did as a college um, when we became West Highland um, in 2010 was agree really which courses could be delivered in this way, um, in the same way as U the UHI model um, of using digital technologies. And back in those days, everything was largely by video conference. So in other words, we looked at those courses that did not require specialist workshops, studios, um, the outdoors, a boat, for example. And we kind of concentrated on those so that one person in Alapool, two people in Portree, maybe a third or a fourth in Malig and Strontian, could join, join with a, a larger cohort of students based in one of our largest campuses um, in, in Fort William. And that way it would kind of bring about a more sustainable tourist, uh, sustainable curriculum because the cohort numbers were great, great enough, but it equally gave opportunity to some of our learners in the more remote areas. And we've been delivering full-time FE and part-time FE for that number of years using that way of delivery. So there's a whole range of different sort of considerations, I suppose, that we've learned as we've been going and there's been a few sort of frameworks we've been putting in place. Um, but before we get onto that, uh, what do we mean by online? And I want to be super clear about this because there, there probably are some associations with online being, oh, left students to be left on their own mate and, and you just get on with it and there's no engagement or anything like that. Um, whereas what I'm meaning and what I'm talking about here is um, synchronous timetabled sessions combined with the asynchronous activity in the likes of a virtual learning environment. So I mentioned before that we started with EC, but as digital technologies advanced more recently, we um, started using um, what I would frame as a, 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 an online classroom, a class, classroom in, in the cloud. So the likes of using Blackboard Collaborate, and now we're using WebEx, we use Google, we use Microsoft Teams, and um, that brings learners together from anywhere with a teaching member or staff who might be anywhere. Um, I suppose, pre-COVID, most of our students would come into their local centre and join from there. But some student, students more recently, in the last few years, started asking about learning from home because it suited them better. And why not? Why shouldn't they? Um, equally, we built up, along with North Highland College and Inverness College, um, a, a model that we call and refer to virtual school. And that is across all Highland, Highland schools, uh, senior phase. And um, it means that pupils from out of 29 different high schools across the region can join um, courses such as psychology or computing science from any one of those high schools, whether that's in Wick, Aviemore or Gerloch. And again, that is timetabled sessions. And, and we're, with, with that, it's all used in and around um, Google. So one of the big things is about an equivalence of uh, student experience. And one of the things that really enhances that is when, uh, and particularly, um, you know, we've seen this before, is that the, the teacher, the teaching member of staff is not in the same room as any larger cohort of students. Now, this has been quite problematic for West Highland College in Fort William because we simply don't have enough space for all our classes to be delivered in that way. So we have to handle that quite carefully. But, but largely speaking, and this is something that's been recognized across UHI, that that really helps with that equivalence of experience. And I think in moving forward, that raises a little question um, for me. Some of the other things that we have worked on are in and around the curriculum design principles. And again, I really want to strengthen, uh, make, make 
make you aware of this, that we have been designing curriculum courses specifically for this mode of delivery. And we, like every other college and university, have suddenly been thrown into all our other courses, all our practical courses that have suddenly been flung into the online. And I think we have to sort of park a little bit of that because it's not the same as going out and designing curriculum, thinking about the pedagogies and getting that all right. Also from the point of view of the students, because um, we've been considering which technologies and how we're using them. And students know about the technologies, sign up to a course knowing that they are going to be delivered in that way. And there's a completely different buy-in right from the beginning through their induction to the online environment um, from day one, whereas it's a very different story this time around. So some of the other things we've been considering about supporting learners across multiple sites and high schools, online team meetings, and um, Leslie will be talking a little bit more about that. Um, engaging with students is a huge thing. Um, and I think also equally, it's about how we engage with our staff across a, such you know, a remote area. So we've been kind of used to doing that and that has kind of helped us in some ways because we've had all those things in place. Um, as we've moved through the years um, and thanks to UHI as well, when we moved to a new virtual learning environment um, two years ago, UHI have developed a set of benchmarks that all our lecturers use across UHI, which gives a baseline. So there's a sort of minimum expectation in how you use learning technologies in um, your learning and teaching. And then we've been kind of adaptive. You can adapt any sort of quality enhancement approaches to online. Um, just as you can do, you know, you use them in um, when you're together in, in meetings. For example, um, we kind of make use of the professional standards for lecturers and um, colleges in uh, Scotland um, in terms of when we're going in to do peer shadowing and learning dialogues. That's when learning and teaching staff go in and sit in on a lesson or part of a lesson with another member of staff. And that's a really good way for them to learn how to use a particular piece of technology. That has kind of been quite useful more recently for those staff who were used to delivering construction or, or um, maritime in, in, in a practical sense and now having to quickly adapt and move um, online. There's a document that I've highlighted down here, um, building a taxonomy for digital learning. And I think that's really worth everybody having a look at if you're not already aware of it, because it really talks about, you know, some of the te terminology, I think that we need to kind of be a bit more consistent with across um, the sector. So I'm going to hand over uh, to Leslie just now. And uh, welcome, Leslie, and I'll move on to your slide. Hey, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, as Fiona said, we've, uh, we've, we've been delivering quite a long time. I'm fairly new to the college. I think I've been there 18 months. So most of that time has been working online. So that's been uh, interesting for me. Um, but I just thought we'd go to the start of the academic year 2020 to 21 because absolutely it's been a year like no other um, and, and for us it was it was very different a different start to the first lockdown because I'm sure you'll all be aware during the first lockdown it occurred when we were part way through an academic year the students and the staff knew one another we had been having students into the centres as Fiona explained they were being supported by the different centres the centre staff um, the groups had gelled, the work was underway. So, so that moving online totally uh, lockdown was, wasn't potentially as difficult as, as other people, but definitely not as difficult as the start of the 2020-21 academic year. Because during that, we'd planned for as many courses to be delivered online as possible, only the practical courses having on-site access at that time, 
but we needed to identify from our new students and from existing students who we'd maybe loaned equipment to before what their positions were. We were very lucky that, as Fiona said, with, with UHI, there were a series of, of online checking, um, online broadband checkers and equipment checkers that we, we were able to contact all our students to ask them to run so that we could identify and allow the support teams to follow up with the individuals who had identified support, uh, support concerns to see how we would be able to, to work with them. We also identified that students new to us who maybe wouldn't have the opportunity to be going into, into college centres might need to, to be shown how to be to supported, how to actually work in an online environment. So we, did, we didn't want them to have any concerns about coming in and joining and not having any chance to, to meet other people. So we organised what we called a pre-course familiarisation session. So we developed that over the summer. I think, I think looking back in future, I would have done that at a slightly different time because obviously we, the, the tutors weren't necessarily as aware of that because of their, their summer leave, etc. But we did deliver those in conjunction with the tutors. It did allow students to come onto site to understand what they were going to access, how they were going to access their online inductions, their proper course inductions, uh, and access the technologies they'd need before they before they started. So that was, a, that was, that was a, a good development for us. We also uh, had to redevelop all the student support activity that normally we'd have popped into classrooms, we'd have, we'd have had people out at the centres being able to provide information. So we worked uh, and, and quickly put together a BLE student services induction. And one of the benefits we found about that is it's, it's online now so that students can pop back and, and re catch up on information if they've missed it. Because, um, you know, we do have a lot of information like a lot of other colleges and universities to share with students when they first join us. So that's been really positive. It's, it's enabled us to rise to a challenge that we had to. But actually, it's, it's, it's there and we will develop that and continue to develop that as we go. And then one of the other things we did is, is actually after that student uh, induction period, we got together a short life working group because we felt it was important for, for staff across the college, uh, support staff and curriculum staff to get together and identify what had worked well, uh, but also what had gone wrong. Um, and from that, we had two meetings did set a bit of homework, so I felt a bit bad for that. <laughs> we set two meetings, uh, curriculum staff, support staff, we got together, we identified what we felt had gone well, what hadn't, and that provided us with four work streams to, to then be able to look at to support improvements. So some of the learning for us was that we needed to share, we need to share, we need to keep on sharing. Um, we are clear that the last year has been an, an emotional roller coaster, you know, not just not just for the staff, but for the students, for, for the wider communities. So that importance of keeping in touch has been really important. We, as, as student support, we worked with the curriculum area leads and we identified a, a very short half hour weekly meeting with curriculum area and support teams being able to meet up like this. Gave, a, gave an environment where we would be able to quickly identify any barriers that students may be facing and work to remove those as quickly as we could. We've also made sure that the COVID planning related information is, is in a central location so that there's lots of visibility about that. Uh, and one of the other things that we've done is we took what was our academic affairs operational group. It was. Uh, historically had been a more formal meeting. We had defined agendas, but maybe more limited attendees. But we opened that up very early on um, to become a weekly meeting. Our conversations were, were quite fluid. Um, they were based on whatever the most relevant updates were of the week, whether it was COVID related, government, SQA, etc. But they became a, an opportunity for everybody to uh, attend. We've we've redefined that a little bit in the last ooh, couple of months and we've renamed that to be a college forum to make it clear that absolutely anyone from college 
absolutely is welcome to those events to come and either listen, to ask questions, to pose, uh, to pose solutions, to share problems. And, and I've put that last bit on the slide is to allow mistakes and setbacks and, and learn from them because we are sharing what is going well, but we're also sharing where we maybe need a little bit of support. And, and I think that will go on to the slide that Fiona will go on to next. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Um, <clears throat> so that leads us nicely on into talking about these little things. And as, as Leslie has said, we continue to gather ideas from our staff and share these their ideas. The, the College Forum has actually become a, you know, there's a funny dynamic going on almost that it's becoming an sort of an enhancement um, to what we're actually doing because people are quite um, good about sharing things, but also about asking those questions and being more critical, I suppose, but in, in, a, in a way that you can, it allows for that and facilitates that. So if somebody says, oh, I think we should be doing this, somebody else isn't afraid to challenge that and talk around, well, what will be the right solution here? So I'd like to just um, let you share it with you. I couldn't bring all my colleagues with, with me, um, but all these examples here are from those lecturers that are normally in college teaching face-to-face, -face, doing very practical things. Um, so first of all, I've got Sean. We've got a number of people who have relevant practical experience who are students. And one of the nice things already is they're actually helping them, helping each other. And we've got one, we've got a couple of people who are very new to boats, very new to, to, to fishing. And we've got a couple of older guys who have been there and got the t-shirt when it comes to tying knots and things like that. And they're actually helping each other online. And because with WebEx, you have the facility where you can pull out, two students can talk to each other. That some of the older guys, have, we haven't asked them to do it. They're doing it themselves and it's great. They're actually, they're actually helping each other and a lot of the problems are coming through and I know later on that people are struggling now will have the skills to deal with other things we come across and the only guys who have not been in a classroom for a while and it's working a treat to help it just, we're now making use of the students indirectly and it's actually helping peer tutoring I suppose is what you would call it. So that was Paul, uh, that was um, Sean from, from Malik. And um, then we've got Julie uh, from Gerlock. ...of how to engage with students. Um, I actually, on Friday when I had my class, I've been struggling with engagement with the students and thought about how I could to get them on board and just to see how they're really doing. So I did the main session with them and then I did some one-to-ones and it really gave me an insight into some of the struggles that they're having at the moment. Um, and it was just a real worthwhile process to spend sort of 20 minutes with each student and just say, hi guys, how are you? Um, and it really benefited them and benefited me. They engaged much better on a one-to-one -one basis. And, you know, the results have been that they're starting to feed work back and, and things like that. And I think they just need a, it's all right, we're all in this together kind of thing. That was really helpful for a lot of our other staff to hear um, Julie um, talk about that. We invited Anna um, in, she's the student voice manager for HISA, our student association. And it was quite interesting also listening to her. The reason Fiona's invited me along today is to have a chat about elections. Um, like everybody, I'm just sort of listening to the chat going on. Um, engagement has been quite challenging for HISA this year um, to actually reach our students and everything being online and get for them to get to know us and who we are and what we can do for them. Elections, to put it simply, is our big gig. We had HISACON last week, which is a big gig, but elections is the gig of the year for HISA. Um, so I'm really reaching out to as many people as I can to enlist help where possible, please. What we always find is the best engagement is where we get staff support. 
Um, we, we can't do it without you. That's that's what we're saying. And particularly where staff are willing to let us into their classrooms and um, to let our staff come in and have a chat with your students and get to know them and let the students get to know us and who we are is building that relationship and building the trust that is so important. So that was um, Anna. And I think building on that trust um, between class reps, between um, Heiser, really, really and it's it's also building on that relationship with um, with staff and the student association. Um, and then we have one or two other people here. Ailed um, was brilliant in sharing her um, Ailey. Sorry. Just about the school link there. As you know, the schools there were little groups coming together on Google Classroom from the different schools. But since the lockdown, of course, they're all coming in from home. And I found that the absence was starting to increase. So on Monday, thankfully, they all came on to the classroom and we did a show and tell about our pets. And they really enjoyed that. And it gave them that social conversation. Uh, we had everything from chameleons to a snake, to a dog that's due pups any day, and that's kept them riveted. So just simple things like that. Just a 10-minute session where everyone had the chance that wanted to uh, show what they had of pets and now they're wanting to do another one next week on just show and tell whether it's a plant or a picture or yeah so just simple things because if it's too technical they tend to get a bit tied up uh, with it but it was just something really simple and it helps them to share information and have that social um, interaction with each other I found that very helpful. So social interaction at the moment is a real challenge and we recognise that and it, it's the same for staff, which is why it's really important to bring staff um, together on a regular basis. Um, that was really useful and I think it's something that, you know, again, we're reflecting on how do we ensure that students have um, the ability to use some of that time online just to catch up because they can't do it in the corridor in the in the in the in the college. So a girl that went through the, the course who is now a professional outdoor instructor. So she's coming back in to meet the students and talk about her journey um, and I guess kind of share with that it's not always easy. They're probably having a particularly hard time given this this crisis. But you know there are there are bumps along the way. And there's a couple of other instructors also sharing their stories next week, just in the hope that it can be a week of a bit of inspiration and positivity and looking to the future and that this will pass. And, you know, boy, it's going to be great on the other side and we will get there. So, you know, using that that human experience to things been really valuable. So that was Aileed um, talking about um, uh, one of her ex students who's now a qualified instructor. Um, and that was also quite inspirational for those students. Um, and we found that some of the other courses have been doing the same. And so I'll leave um, with this final one from uh, Michael, because it, um, it was just, um, it's quite topical actually. I'm teaching at Arden Market on a Wednesday and they've got a lot of issues across there with access, ICT, including power cuts this week. In fact, they've actually given up on the whole school on Friday and cancelled it due to the next um, forecasted power cuts. But each week I've been putting all the materials the students need for the class online and then sending an email first thing in the morning. So if they can't make it into the group, it's all there for them. And today I mentioned the word pancakes in the title of the email. I had a lot of work completed before they're even meant to be in the class. Um, I've had more students accessing earlier than ever before. The work's getting done. I've got more work handed in. I keep the tasks open until Friday, so we'll see what happens later on in the week. However, it seems to have caught their interest. It is one of the classes they look forward to every year. We do it the Tuesday before Pancake Day. They love that class. So rather than miss out this year, we've been putting different types of pancakes. We've done lace pancakes. We've done some Malaysian ones. We've looked at crepes, we've looked at pancake art, uh, all these little things are coming through on TikTok and a few other places. And it's really caught their imagination. It's been a really good day today with interaction with the students and actually it's been a really successful lesson. So that was quite um, nice to hear. And actually um, all the staff banter um, yesterday, it was actually at the forum meeting yesterday, that's why I decided to include it. Um, everybody was talking about cake and pancakes and missing that opportunity to get pancakes um, from the students themselves in college. 
so I think it's those little things that really, really do help. And um, as I said earlier, it is about that combination. Um, it is about um, getting together. There are many approaches that you can take. And I really hope that some of these things um, other people can, can, can use and adapt. Um, I think one of the things, um, you know, for us, uh, and I've heard many colleagues saying this, is that although we are all apart, we are actually working better together. And I agree with that. But I also would say that we are working, sorry, that we are better working together because of it. So it's kind of flipping the two things together. Um, we'll always need our physical campus, I would add, absolutely, because there's lots of practical learning activity that goes on, and you can't do that or replicate it online. But what I would say is that we also have our campus in the cloud, or we've got that online ability. So it's really looking at how we learn from what we've been doing over the last wee while, and um, kind of move in on onwards with being online and making sure that all students, no matter where they are, do have some form of learning and accessibility, I suppose. Uh, and, and now I would just simply like to hand back to um, John and thank, thank you very much for listening. Well, thank you very much, Fiona and Leslie, uh, on behalf of, of the attendees here and those that are watching on YouTube. I think that message of the little things are big as one that in different contexts we've heard before with the Sky Sports team, when they were successful, they talked about all the little things they did. Andy Murray does a, a talk about the little things he does to improve performance. And I think that's a, it's a very salient, very useful message is a raft of small incremental improvements uh, will help the overall picture to improve. Um, so again, on behalf of your colleagues, uh, can I thank you and we'll end the recording there.